here we go. You should see the login screen. Got it. Oh, lovely. Great. So I'm going to log in. I'm going to sign in with Google. Single sign on. Uh, there we go. And this Astrato workspace is one that I'm already using. And we're going to imagine that you've just signed up to Astrato and you want to explore some data. So yeah, John, if you want to run through some some questions with me at any point, um, just jump in. Yeah, so, I, I'm, we we see a lot of people just getting started uh, just using their Google account, but I assume when they move to the paid subscription, they can do things like integrating their own uh, corporate SSO and things like that. Yeah. Like something like an Octa. Yeah, so we can do that um, with the enterprise connection, uh, set up new, new connections, OpenID, Okta, Google Workspace, and we have a few more coming soon as well. Great question. Okay. So there's lots of different ways to sign in, um, all enterprise grade. And they and, and while they're while they're sort of kicking the tires, though, they they can still add their their colleagues, even if they wanted to add their colleagues using a Gmail address, assuming that their company is OK with that. We don't want to suggest anybody. Yeah, of course. Cool. So example, I can invite my colleague Liron. He's already in here, uh, but I can set him up as a creator, uh, and add, send invite, etc. Nice and easy. So straight off the bat, when I create a workspace, you can start inviting people. So one of the things that you might be asking is, OK, if I'm testing out a new product, how can I play with Astrato without connecting any data? So I'm just going to create a new workbook. Yeah, I've got lots of data views. I'm going to go to a new data view, and I'm going to use an existing connection that we have. And that's the demo data source. And I'm going to create a data view. So a data view is the preparation layer in Astrato. So this is part of the data view editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a few tables from my sales sample scheme. And this connection, remember, is available as soon as you log in and import the demo data connection from the admin section. So I'm going to add my product table, my sales, and my territory. I hop over to define, and I've got some join suggestions already. So you can see that here, product to sales. I've got the little arrow on the top left, and territory to sales as well. I can apply them individually, or I'm going to do both at the same time, apply all. You're probably wondering, OK, automatic joins, is that a little bit risky? How can I be confident in that? Just calculate the quality. So a bit of a warning there. I can check here. OK, key quality 100% and then 0.26%. So I've got green on one of those sides. I can look into the that with a bit more detail if I want to, but I'm happy with that. I know the data. And we can continue to create a workbook. If I want to add different dimensions and measures, I can also do that here. So just to get started, I'm going to add in, uh, see what we can add in here. We'll add in a sales amount, sum of sales amount. We'll call it total sales. Now we're going to format it as well in dollars. You can also reformat that later. So are we ready to get started, John? Yeah, question on adding that sum of sales. So is that sum of sales? Yeah, kind of what what's the level of granularity there? Is it wherever you defined it? How how does that work? So I've got my sales table here. I'm going to preview it so I know exactly what I'm looking at. And the field was sales amount. Here it is. So it's sum of this field. So if I if I only do sum of sales, I'm going to get the total for 
all of the rows in this table. I can aggregate it as well, but we'll see that when we get to the visualization. So if you had, uh, so you, you've got a, a territory, I'm sorry, I, I forget what, what columns were in there, but if you had a sales rep, you could do some of sales by that sales rep because that's connected. If you had by product, because you've got product connected. Okay. Um, and then one one last question on the joins, because I know this was something that kind of tripped me up a little bit as I got the more complex data sets. When you're looking at those joins and thinking, is, is this really the right way or do I want to switch direction? And this might sound like a dumb question, but uh, the the detail versus master, would you think of that as the many to one or the one to many? Right? Is there, there's, it could be many to one, right? right? There's many detail yeah. records in one master record. Yeah, that's right. So we can see that here. If I zoom in, we can see that master's got more rows, and the details got less rows. So we've got many to one. Okay. That's why we have 100% key quality. And we do. We can switch direction here as well. And if I try to do that and do that here, <clears throat> now I calculate the quality. It's green. Sorry, yes, that's something I should have done before. <laughs> so now all green, all good to go. Should we go and create a chart? Do it. Let's go. So lots of choice with visualizations. So I can drag and drop something on. I will pick a bar chart. It's the one that everybody seems to start with. Uh, let's use that measure that I created earlier in the data view editor in the DVE, total sales. And John, you mentioned territory. Yeah. So let's see what is in the territory table, we've got region. So sales by region and what, John, what shall I do next on this chart? Uh, I don't know, I usually start by putting it in the upper left. I'm not, I'm not the most creative guy, I'm usually the, the data nerd, so I like the fact that it kind of- Okay, so does, I'll play around with some of the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I will just clean it up and do what I, what, how I like to present my charts. So add some grid lines in there, make that a little bit darker. I like to get rid of the, the axis lines. So I'm going to remove that and the ticks, clean it up a little bit. And let's add a bit of radius to it. And we'll change the color of the bars, make that blue. And all of the can edges we, off. Can we color them by dimension or by the, the measure itself? Yeah, of course. So there's a few ways to do that. We can do a categorical color. So by the dimension, we can pick a palette or I can use a custom palette. So we can pop some hex codes in there, or copy paste it right. between charts. But I might pick this one or so you could create a, a corporate theme and, and use the same one consistently for the category? Yeah, um, that can be done easily. We're actually working on theming, so this will become a lot easier. Okay. So okay. being able to make sure that all of your workbooks follow a consistent theme uh, or a group of your workbooks. So even if you're consultancy or OEM, you can pick that theme for each of your uh, customer workbooks. So I think I'll pick, yeah, I'll go back to the flat one. If I wanted to color by gradient, the color by the measure, that's done here. That's all I need to do. I can customize it. So custom palette, I want to edit that. And I want to say, I only want to color it up to 10 million. I got enough zeros in there. 
and I can add a few more colors in there. So I can have a pale green in there. Yeah. And I'll make, reduce the padding cool. a little bit. So I can't really see what these values are. I'm just going to make this chart a bit bigger and make it easier to read. I'm going to, I'm in the data section, measures. I want to have that context so people don't ask questions. They're not trying to export the data. They don't have to hover over the chart. I'm going to show data labels. There we go. We've inherited the formatting that I set earlier in the DVE, in the data view editor. I'm just going to abbreviate that so it's easier to read. And add the dollar sign in. Change the rounding. There we go. Nice and easy to read. 9.1 million Australia. And uh, two million. Dad's Canada. not here, buddy. Hello. Do we have a question? I think that might have been a stray comment. Okay. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. No worries. Yep. So uh, I'm going to duplicate that chart, and I think that we probably don't want to show a few of these the stragglers at the bottom that and i would say there's a few ways to do that so we'll keep that one for later and i want to just show the top five and of course if i if i'm filtering the data what's going to happen is that that top five will change if i want to always show Australia to Canada. What I can do here in this chart, yeah, I've got three very similar charts now. I'm going to remove the limit. I'm going to go to my filters and we can specify, permanently specify for the region. And I want to exclude from a list Southeast. Gonna have it semicolon separated. I don't want to show southeast, northeast, or central. I'll click apply. And now I've got what's most important to me. Yeah, I've used a comma. There we go. My typos. So it's very easy to filter, and I could also exclude that from the global filtering. Another thing that I could do. So does that uh, does that exclude everything that that's filtered globally? Like if I uh, filter on a a year or a month or something like that. So what we've just, just done field? there, it's just that field for that chart specifically. So if I add a filter object to the sheet and we slice and dice it by product, product category. You have a category here? Yeah, there we go. So if I select bikes, we're still looking at, we're just still that, excluding. Just those regions, those regions, you're right. Okay. And if I ignore global filtering, you'll see those values increase back to what they were. So that way I can do comparative analysis as well. So I could say I want a particular chart for bikes. I want a particular particular chart for accessories, clothing, components across all of those categories. Right. So uh, if you've got like four business lines that you're really tracking, you could almost break it up into four quadrants and they yeah. like accessories, et cetera. Just make that a bit bigger in case anyone can't see that. But but I, that's not. I, yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to derail you too much. But you know, everybody does a bar chart. What are some of the things that that you think Estrado does that are like? This is a lot cooler than visualizations that a lot of the other tools are doing. So when we 
I mean, Just obviously the about. filtering and stuff like that is, is yeah. definitely cool and a game changer, but in term, just in terms of straight up this visualization type. So I would say that being able to customize the chart is a, is a plus in itself. So if I want to say, okay, let's, let's have a benchmark for um, our teams. Um, each region should be how many zeros have I got in there? <laughs> uh, each region should uh, be at least six million. So uh, I'd call this the target, and I want to change my coloring. I want to customize it even further. I'm going to change this back to single color. Uh, I'll just make it gray, and we're going to add some conditional coloring. So I've added a reference line. 6 million. I've done this in the data section. I'm going to go back to style. Yeah, conditional coloring. I want to make sure that benchmark is super clear to all of my users. So I'm going to add a measure rule. You're going to say total sales. Anything that's over 6 million. I want to see that in green. There we go. So I know that exactly who's met my target. I don't need to read the numbers. I don't need to necessarily study the chart. I just need to look at the color, look at the line. Super fast to read. And then I can take that one step further. Let's add an axis band. So we'll start that at 6 million. And uh, we'll enter that 12 million. Is it possible yet to do something like, I want to know what their average monthly sales were and color code by based off of the, a different measure? Like, I, I assume you would have to, well, maybe I shouldn't assume, but I, I, how would I do that where I wanted to know um, what the, the average order value for these different uh, regions and then color it based off of that or, or do something based off of a, a different measure like that? So I would add a KPI. I can layer that on top of the chart. Let's say we want the average. So I'm not going to use that measure. That's I know that's the sum. So I'll take the sales amount and we'll get the just average sales amount overall. I can do that per region. No, I need to make sure that's grouped by. Um, so I've got that here. Uh, let's so wait, when do you use that to create a measure versus going all the way back to the data set to make a measure? I would say that you can see here in my measures, that's from mm -hmm. the data view editor. Mm -hmm. I would go to the data view editor when I'm trying to create a measure that needs to be governed. So a measure that I want to make sure is used across the workbook consistently with consistent formatting. But I can also do calculations in the DV. We are bringing that into this area in the workbook. The reason we have um, that functionality in the, in the DV is all about governance and making sure that there is consistency. Because we all know what it's like when someone does a sum or an average of the same field and it's not quite clear in the ui especially when we're <laughs> looking at other products so having that governance is really important to us making sure that all users have uh, those types of things available to them and we'll see that in a couple of minutes with the customer report i'll, I'll get to that after okay. Yeah, we I can think, add a, uh, we're trying to keep this short, so we'll probably be moving on to that customer report pretty, pretty soon here, right? Oh, yeah. So there we go. I have my average. I'm going to say average sales here. Managed to squeeze that in. Okay. May, maybe it's something for, uh, for the next session where we get into some other stuff but I, one of the things i was thinking is 
could we color code the bars differently based off of the overall average sales? You know, right now we're we are doing it based off of kind of a, a hard coded number for six million. But if we could do it off of some kind of expression. Yes. So that is something that we will be adding to the product, being sure. able to have measures within variables so we can refer mm -hmm. to that uh, across the product. So all of these dynamic targets, benchmarks, and anything that is, example, driven by uh, Snowpark, so your uh, budgets, uh, anything that's predictive as well, forecasts, all of that synchronized across the product. I like the the layering aspects and the way you're able to get a lot of kind of visual, uh, I guess, breaks in that just even in a little bar chart. Yeah, the, the, the layering is quite sophisticated. If I, I'm just going to take a text box just to show how how simple this could be. I'll add a, a border to it. Uh, great border, solid background. We can, there we go, we'll make the sheet background gray. And we'll set it to the back. I've got a card with my, my chart in it. I've got my average sales there and I can give it a title, say sales by region. Put that in the top left, add a bit of padding to it, and I can even change the font. Okay, pay this. No. Nice, quick style <laughs> dashboard. But only one chart. And you're probably thinking, okay, I need to explore the data. Which chart should I do next? That can be a bit of a problem if you're not familiar with the data set whether you're a consultant or just new to a data set. And I created a new sheet here. I'll do that again, just in case anyone missed that. So new sheet, click on the self-service layout. That's opened the custom report. I already have my total sales in there because we're taking the governed dimensions and measures from the measures data view editor. I'm going to add in region product. Uh, so category from the product table. Uh, anything else, John, that you want to see? Anything that comes to mind? I'll add in order date. So we have total sales in there. Let's. I'm going to put color in there as well. As dimension. So. Pick category, region, total sales, and let's see this in preview mode as well. So now just pretend I'm a consumer, I'm a business user, I've gone to the last sheet. I want to see the data exactly how I want it. I want to have my region first, then category, color, order date. And I have all of that all under my control. And I can right click, export object, TSV. I can download that, attach that to an email. That's my data. I can look at it in Excel if I want to. Uh, I can and share it with you are whoever like a I want. User. Sorry? But you are like a user. Well, we yeah. put together all these dashboards and people export them in email. Um, speaking of it's which, a, it, is there a way to go and um, to actually just send somebody a link? Like, can you send me a link to this view of the uh, of the custom report that you just did? Um, yes, not to that specific configuration yet. So we will be adding bookmarking. But okay. I will give you an example. If I open up this here. So 
Let's go to self-service. It's the same thing. This is a published workbook. So I want to view all of my customers, deal value. And yeah, I think that's fine. And we'll look at it for January. Click apply. Anyone can do the same thing as me. Embed the sheet, external. I can include the applied filter as well. So if you want to, if anyone wants to do that right now, can, can everyone see this chat? Yeah. If you copy well, there, every... There's a, a chat and a QA. and a So I think everybody sees the chat. I need to send that to everyone in the meeting. So if you copy that, you can see exactly what I'm seeing right now. So go for it, give it a go, give, give us some feedback. Um, sharing is uh, an important thing for us. You can embed that link into any website. So you can put it on Salesforce if you want. You don't need to leave at all just to get your Strato charts in there. You can have it all under, under one area, under the hand. How are we for time? I've gone through a lot of stuff. Uh, we did have a, a question in the Q&A uh, about advanced statistical functions like linear regression, correlation, t-test, et cetera. Um, you want to talk maybe about just generally speaking, all of the, the functions that are available? So I happen to have that right in front of me now. Uh, we have time travel and snow park. Uh, so Snow Park, uh, Joe Warbington, feel free to chip in. Joe um, from Snowflake is on the call. We have the charts loading now. So this clustering is powered by, oh yeah, I've just got some feedback. The link isn't working. I think uh, it might be some formatting URL. So I'll, I'll follow up on that. The... Uh, I, I got the link to work. It's just the, the columns themselves didn't come over but you just have to really copy and paste the entire link. Yeah. So I only, think that's... if you just, if you just click on the link, it doesn't work because it, it topped off the uh, data slash deals, et cetera. Okay. So on screen now, I have three charts all powered by Snowpark, uh, specifically Snowpark for Python. Snowpark in, in Snowflake allows you to run external code across Python, Java, and Scala. So we're using Python, we're do, performing clustering. Uh, K-means clustering, to be specific. And I have each point as a salesperson, uh, and I'm grouping them, We've got high deal value going across and going up, we've got high deal count. So I want to group them into three subgroups so I can have a premium sales team, a, a small business sales team and SMB, small medium business sales team. So, or maybe I want four groups. So if I want to change the clusters to four, I can rerun that model. I can apply filters on those clusters. I can select cluster one, two, three, four, et cetera. You can see that clusters have updated on that table and are updating on these scatter charts as well. We've written that value back. It's recorded. I, peers, have written that value back um, and the timestamp as well. And we've returned that through a view. This means I can dynamically perform data science as a business user. I don't need to teach anyone how to do it. Just say, go on here. Whatever task you need to do, we're supporting you using data science in Astrato using Snowflake and Snowpark. And it's all live. Nothing behind the scenes pre-calculated. Um, what about in the, uh, by the way, that, that stuff is really cool. I know a lot of people are starting to use Snowpark and everybody is talking about and or doing uh, machine learning, at least to a certain degree. So, uh, but what about just in a, a standard data view, uh, the different functions that are available, are there any statistics functions available in there? Or is it, you know, do you, if you're really gonna do statistics, do you really need to use Snowpark? 
at this point. Um, in a standard data view, what do you mean by by that? Um, well, I saw like some average, you know, kind of yeah, rudimentary kinds of functions. But what about things like um, uh, so statistical? What we'll be adding as part of uh, the DVE and as part of the measures is things like different window functions, um, accumulation, bucketing as well. So the it, in Snowflake terms, that's width, bucket, and tile, things like that. Uh, we, we may work on a histogram as well to make things a little bit easier. Yes, of course you can do that in a bar chart, but just to make it a little bit easier for, for business users that may not have done that before. So we're supporting more and more functions. And we'll also be discussing how we can better support Snowpark functions in the product, whether it be within a single chart out of the box or in the data view editor. So watch that space. Um, and then a, another question that came in, uh, some of the possible data sources that it can consume and can it access my on-premise data? Um, I, I think the on-premise uh, can't be done, but there are plenty of tools out there like, you know, click data integration or click replication and uh, Napoleon and five grand and HBR, um, those kinds of things. Um, well, Joe, Joe chimed in. Uh, Snowflake has external tables, so it is yeah, possible. Good. Yeah. I think one so thing you, that is... Can you, can you expand on that, Joe? So one of the ways uh, Snowflake doesn't have to move all of your data into the cloud, um, we know people have a lot of on-premise databases, and this allows you to tap into those um and basically makes it a first class citizen a table or a view alongside your other data so you don't have to set up that pipeline although you you're at you're, you're beholden to the performance the scalability of that particular data source so that's the main reason people move to snowflake is gain all the performance and governance but those external tables kind of give you that middle ground we're not ready to shift this thing into the cloud yet but we can still tap into it okay okay that's really good to know. So interestingly, you mentioned the external tables, and it can be difficult knowing what external data that you, you do need to support your analysis. So one of the things that we will be working on this year, and have already started, uh, we'll be announcing next week. Uh, this will be a tool that we add to Astrato that can help identify trends, anomalies, but also bring in the right external data within a matter of seconds, uh, providing recommendations as well, correlations, and even going as deep as causality on simple data sets. So please do watch out for that next week. Uh, it's an extremely fast feature and extremely valuable. Uh, I know we're at about 8.40. Um, we did have Leon Gordon, uh, the master of the data DNA challenge on. I don't know if Leon wanted to get on and, and say a couple of words. Hey, John. Happy to be with you all. Hi, Piers. Hi, Leon. Hey, Leon. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me on today. Um, that got to say, absolutely fantastic session. It's, it's really good to see um, Astrato's progress in terms of data visualization and consumption. So some really good uh, tips and tricks and demonstrations in there. Um, as you mentioned, John, um, just wanted to come in and give a quick uh, message in terms of the data DNA um, data set challenge that we run on a monthly basis. Um, now, this is open to all data visualization tools, um, but we do also have a special Astrato uh, mini challenge, whereby if you are using the Astrato tool on our data set, um, you, you actually uh, become eligible to win some Astrato goodies as well. Now, this challenge is currently open um, and it does end on the 24th. 3rd of February. Now, in terms of what you can win, 
Um, our overall winner can win a 400 US dollar uh, Amazon voucher. Um, they can also win a dedicated circle membership worth 497 um, US dollars and two data books from our sponsors packed as well. Um, now we do have four runners up in the challenge and they also go on to win um, the four, four eBooks from packed as well. Um, the challenge is free to enter. And the data set that we're actually visualizing this month is based on Bigfoot sightings. Um, I'm just going to pop the link to the to the challenge, to the current challenge in the chat, if somebody hasn't done it already. Um, and it's really simple to enter. Um, as I say, for those using um, a different visualization tool, you just download um, the data set um, and you're ready to go be up and running um, with the data set. For those of you that are using Astrato, um, if you follow the instructions on our webpage, um, peers may go into it in a bit more detail here, um, but you can directly access um, the Bigfoot uh, sightings um, data set as well via the Astrato tool. So it would be fantastic to have you join us um, and join our community, whereby, like I say, we specialize in visualizing data and growing together. And it's absolutely fantastic to see Joe on the call. Um, Joe has been a previous guest judge. Joe Wobbington um, has been a previous guest judge for us in the data set challenge. And I also believe we have um, Joe Chim on the call as well, who, who's won the data DNA set the most amount of times um, in, in its past. So um, absolutely fantastic to be here with you all um, and tell you a bit more about the data DNA challenge. Thanks, Liam. Thank you very much, Liam. Uh, last, uh, last question uh, for, for me, uh, and then if anybody else has questions and want to unmute or if they want to send a chat, feel free. But um, what are some of the coolest things that you could talk to that, that maybe we just don't have time to show today because they're a little bit more, a little bit more involved? And, and obviously, you know, anybody that's on the call, if you want to, uh, spend some some detailed time going through some of this stuff. We're more than happy to, to set up some time to talk about your use cases. I would say it's actually a lot of snowflake features. Um, time travel, but also we have native write back across uh, a few of our data connectors as well. So na native write back uh, has helped a, a lot of customers add metadata comments. Um, and help audit their data in in Astrato. There's a few there's a few core cool use cases that we have on uh, I think some some videos as well from Astrato Live. So do check that out. Uh, time travel is quite interesting as well. It's I think it's probably one of the the few we have one of the few use cases that are very analytical being able to see a history of your data and go back to yesterday uh, especially if you've got data that is frequently updated not just adding new rows but people are going back and and updating records like a, a customer account subscription etc you can see what changed over time when it changed as well so at bizlib we do that to see which salesperson's in the lead etc uh, and they say they and track go back who, and who took the data each one over <laughs> you can't change they they can't change that data but they can they can see uh who who took first place okay that can that can be quite fun yeah i think probably one of the most interesting things that i can't talk about today wait for the announcement um should be next week uh and that'll be quite interesting that'll be of our first big step into AI. There might be some of you on the call that have heard about this briefly. Um, but yeah, if you are interested, please reach out to me. I can uh, pass that on directly. That's some awesome little cryptic sort of little chunks of info to leave us there on uh, peers. Thank you very much. Um, to find out, you have to follow a strata on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, that's a very good tactic to leave people wanting more. Very, very good. Um, a big thank you from myself and everybody on the call to to you, Piers, to you, John. Uh, thank you for running us through that and, and asking all the, the, the questions um, and sort of keeping the chat going with all of that. Um, thank you to everyone who joined the call. Um, as I mentioned at the, the outset, we recording will go through shortly. 
plus we'll, we'll include sort of the data DNA challenge and everything, uh, all the sort of resources and all the good stuff that we covered on the call. Um, any other questions that we might not have managed to get to, I will read through the chat and double check. And, and if there is anything we didn't get to, I will make sure we get answers out to you. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for joining once again. Um, I've been Jason, your your host, um, community manager for Astrato and Bizlib. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing all of you at the next session, the next lab, the next um, dashboard off, and uh, also some fantastic sessions and dashboard submitted at the, the, the next Data DNA Challenge. So yeah, thank you very much. See you all on the next one. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.